we're going to look at using the animation options within Render Studio to render images and render animations. One of the nice features about using Studio is you can animate using a 2D sketch as well as the 3D components within the model. To get into Render Studio we go to the Environments tab, then we can click the Studio button. Once you click the Studio button you have the menu appear across the top. One of the first things we want to do is get our animation timeline appearing and see what we're trying to achieve. The animation timeline. You can expand the timeline by picking the bottom at the bottom. At the moment, you can see the models listed, but there's no features there to animate. First thing we can do now is set up our camera view. So you want to create a camera view on the side of the model. First, thing I want to do is use my view cube to orientate the model roughly where I want it to see. That's my view created. What I want to do now is create a camera on this view. So the easiest way of doing that, look at the camera in the browser view, right-click. Go create camera from view. See, then a little square appears, and that represents the camera. I will put it back into an ISO view. It's a little bit more obvious. Zoom out a bit. You have a little camera, and it's showing it's pointing in that direction. That's the target there. There's my camera icon. So what I want to do now: pick my first camera option, rotate the camera around. I've got the position where I want to start at. Then I'm going to put the camera one, do a snapshot here. Then I'm going to rotate the camera around, put my second position in. What I want to do now though is I want to do it over a set period of time. So on my timeline down here, I'm going to drag it to three seconds, rotate the view back around to the orientation I want, and take another snapshot. If I go back to the beginning of the timeline, press play. You can see the view orientates over the three second period and press stop. I can adjust the time by going on the little slider here, moving it up and down, or alternatively I can right click, hit edit, and I can change the times over here. So I'm happy with those. What I want to do now is start animating the sketches I've created. At the moment I've got two different types of sketches. I've got the cylinder which represents the outside and I've got a cylinder here which represents the inside. What I've done, I've created a little form using iLogic which enables me to drive those constraints. So I've got my central stroke which drives the bucket. So if I move that, you can see the bucket will move up and down. Then I've got the side stroke which moves the arms up and down. So the first thing I want to do is bring these parameters into the timeline so I can edit them. The easy way of doing that is go to Parameter Favorites. Then in these boxes here, you can pick both of them to bring into the model and go OK. There's a nice easy way of finding them. If I go back into my favorites, I can then see the central stroke and side stroke. To animate them, I can add my central stroke into the timeline. So right click, go central stroke, animate parameters. I can then have a menu that comes up. So with the box open, I'm going to specify my end distance, so I'm going to put in there 500. Now I've got a few options of where it's going to start doing the time from. So I'm going to specify a time, I'm going to start at 4 seconds, and I'm going to end at 8 seconds. So we've got a 4 second duration. Click OK. You can now see the bucket's moved and it's given me a line on my timeline. So I'm now going to go in and do my next animation. So I'm going to go in and do my side stroke. So again I'm going to right click, animate parameters, my parameters dialog comes up. So my end parameter I'm going to put in 650 and this time I'm going to start it at 7 seconds. So I'm going to specify again 7 seconds and then I'm going to go to 10 seconds. I can increase the height if I want to, so maybe I'll say that wasn't really high enough, so I can maybe make it 750 and go OK. What I could do now is I can go back to the beginning, press play, and it gives me a quick preview of what I'm trying to, to animate. So I'm happy with that's my up motion. Now I want to create the same motion by coming back down again. What I could do, I could create all those views again, but instead I'm going to start using the right click option in the timeline and mirror the features. 
I can also change the time instead of right clicking and going edit I can just grab the rails and just move them slightly so I want an overlap on here I want to keep these overlaps as well what I'm going to do now is behind the bottom motion for the side stroke right click and mirror feature so it just does the feature in reverse right click on the central stroke mirror the feature you can then grab the bar slide it I can then do the same for the camera, mirror that feature and slide that one along as well also shrink the time it does it in go back to the beginning press play and we'll see now our full preview Now I've got my timeline set up, I want to start animating. Before I do that, I want to go into Tools, Application Options, go to Display, and just turn off my origin axes so that they don't come into the final rendered animation. Big Apply. Go back into the Render tab. Then under the Render, I can pick Render Animation. I'm going for a standard width and height and making sure my I lock the aspect ratio. I'm leaving my camera one set up, I'm going to use the current lighting, current background, and have the render type is shaded. Under the output, I can specify a location for the file. I'm going to call it video's visualization underscore one. make sure my file is an AVI file for this one and go save. I'm going to set up as 25 frames per second for digital format of style as true reflection. All I have to do now is pick render and the render window will come up. So I'm going to select Microsoft Video 1 and put the compression quality to 100%. Go OK. The render outputs now come up and you'll see now it slowly starts to rotate round and generate the render this will take some time. The view is nearly rendered now, you can see it's up to 488 out of 501. It's going to the last few frames, then the render will be completed. So now that the render is done, I can pick save and it will prompt me to save a, an image of the file so I'm just going to call it image and click save that's my render completed I can now play the render in media player and you see it's nice and smooth and you can still see the sketch planes and the bottom corner here you can't see the work axis because you turned those off earlier The next thing we're going to do is look at rendering an image. The first thing we can do is close down the animation time log. You no longer need this. You can set up different lighting styles, scene styles, and cameras for rendering the image. What we're going to do first is go back into our view and turn the orthographic view to perspective. It gives us a slightly more realistic look. We go back into the render tab and we're going to look at our lighting styles. On the lighting styles, there are several ones you can choose from. We've got blue hue lighting, and you can see it gives you a visual clue of the lights and where they're shining. So you can see you've got four spot lamps on this one. So you can go through, you can either choose the existing ones and you can preview what they look like, or you can go through and create your new ones. So you can create a new one from scratch, or you can copy an existing one. So you can go right click, copy new lighting style, and then create a new one based upon that. Or if you want to just use an existing one, just go active, make that our active style. For this one, I'm just going to use display and go done. What I can do now, go to my render image tab. For all my settings, it's very, very similar 
to the render animation tab so I'm going to stick with that aspect ratio camera 1 lighting style comes in this display a current background I can stick with my default so I can say but I could if I wanted to have a different color background and I'm going to keep the render type as shaded and my outfit I can save my rendered image and give it a location so I'm going to call this one render and pick save I want it nice and smooth so I'm going to put it on high and I keep true reflection on if I pick render now the render image will come up and start rendering the image you see there it gives us a nice sort of visual image uh, however I might decide that I'm not quite so keen on the styles it's given me I'm not happy with the shadows so I could go in and change that what I can do now I can improve this image by putting some reflections under the surface to do this first of all I need to go to the scene styles and I can set up my plane so at the moment I want to put a plane on the XZ axis and make it reflective you can see at the moment the shadows are showing it halfway up so what you can do is you can measure from the work plane to the feature that you want it to be set sat upon. Let's go done for the moment. Go into inspect, measure, find the work plane to my XZ work plane. Let's rotate around, find the plane I want to measure from, and I can put in that distance there. Now we go back to my render tab go to my scene selection, go to the environment section and I can put an offset put in minus and go save and done. Now we go to my render image making sure my scene style I've got G XZ reflective GP keep the rest of the settings the same I'm going to go render again I want to replace it you can see now it's going to start rendering this time it's now started to put a reflection on the body down here an alternative to using studio is to use 3D Studio Max this can produce photorealistic renders and animations